Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to your train tour of Alaska. My name is Eddie, and I'll be your tour guide today on our leisurely journey through 270 miles of Alaskan wilderness. Your luxury domed rail cars will provide a view of all sorts of wildlife. Now, I only have one set of eyes, but we have 176 more eyeballs here, so I'm gonna need all you folks on the lookout for animals on the, along the way. We might see bears. We may see moose. We might see oos. That's where one of you jumps up and goes, ooh, ooh. And then we get 88 pictures of a rock or a tree stump. It was the last shift of a five-month season, working 80 hours a week with the retired lemming population of middle America. <laughs> we had money in the bank and tickets to Asia were purchased. All we had to do was make it through the next 10 hours without getting fired, and we were set for seven months. We'll be calling you downstairs for breakfast soon. The dining room is just down those eight steps towards the back of the car. Now, please, folks, you'll also find the bathrooms down those stairs. Do remember to lock the doors. Double, triple check those locks. Those are not the kind of bear sightings we're looking for today, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now, gentlemen, this is a moving train, which means that you will be working with a moving target. <laughs> now here at Alaska Train Adventures, we aim to please. You aim to please. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, knock, knock. Who's there? Alaska. Alaska who? I don't know. I'll ask my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you your new best friend for the next eight hours, my brother and your bartender, Hank. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to keep you hydrated, caffeinated, and intoxicated. I know it may be early for some folks, but I assure you it is five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> and if you have too much, no need to worry. Not only am I an excellent bartender, I'm also CPR and first aid certified, so I can take you there, and if need be, I'll bring you right back, folks. <laughs> Today, I'm offering an old family recipe to start your morning off right. Grandpa's Irish coffee, the McCarthy. This is a warming wake up of Irish whiskey, Bailey's Irish cream, Kahlua, amaretto coffee, and hot chocolate topped with a mound of whipped cream and a chocolate drizzle. I made one while Hank described it, topping it with a big mound of whipped cream and chocolate for effect. You could sell these people a steaming mound of shit if it had enough whipped cream on it. <laughs> they oohed and awed, and 10 minutes later we had orders for 60 of them. What they didn't know is that we drank all the good whiskey the day before and replaced it with a vile mixture of well whiskey and tap water. <laughs> and that if they paid in cash, it would go directly into our pockets. <laughs> Folks, if you read the paper this morning, you'd know that we had the world's first bear custody battle here in Anchorage. Animal Control found a pair of young black bear cubs. Now they tracked the parents through tracking collars, but they didn't know if they should put the cubs back with their mother or their father. So they said, little bears, can we put you back with their father? They said, oh, no, 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 not with him. Our father beats us. Well, they said, well, we'll put you back with your mother then. They said, oh, no, no, our mother beats us too. Don't put up with, with her. I said, little bears, who can we put you with? They said, the Chicago Bears. They don't beat anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you, boy, yes, with the conductor's hat and the novelty train whistle. What's, what's your question, son? Do I? Uh, no, no, I don't live in an igloo. Yes, next, sir. <laughs> you, your cinnamon roll is cold and you'd like... I'm sure that the conductor would love to speak with you about this, sir. But unfortunately, he's very busy driving the train right now. This was my life for five years. We worked like dogs entertaining the masses so we could do whatever the fuck we wanted for the rest of the year. 
If your grandparents took an Alaskan train vacation between the years of 2007 to 2011, there's a very good chance that I have lied to them. <laughs> it's nothing personal. I'm sure they're lovely. It's just what we did on the train. If they came back from Alaska talking about Arctic camels, that was my fault. <laughs> And I'm not sorry because they loved it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, did you know that in 1968, a Saudi prince attempted to scale Mount Denali? Having no experience in such conditions, but money to burn, he imported what he thought would be great animals to help porter his team up the mountain. Camels, doomed from the start. They lost every member, including the prince. Yet, the camels survived. Hardy and clever beasts, they adapted to the harsh climate and thrived. <laughs> Many died, but the surviving generations have developed into an extremely rare subspecies seen only above the 16,000 foot mark on Mount Denali. Uh, sir, what's that? Sir? There are no camels in Alaska? Check your phone, Google it. <laughs> oh, no reception. <laughs> Ma'am, yes, you, ma'am. Uh, uh, passport? Alaska, uh, Alaska is a part of the United States, ma'am. You can put that away. M moose, moose, there's a moose on the nine o'clock side, folks. They'd fall all over themselves, digging out cameras and desperately trying to get a shot of the make-believe moose. We could get away with anything. Oh, you just missed it, folks. Did you see that thing, Hank? A bull, even. <laughs> folks, we always used to see a moose on the three o'clock side, right over here, in these woods, every time the train passed. And we knew we could always count on him being there because it was a guy in a moose costume that the company paid. <laughs> no, seriously, folks, seriously. His name was Harold, and he made good money to sit out there in that costume. This worked until one day, Harold noticed there was a bear behind him. Now Harold took off running, which is the worst thing you can do when you see a bear, folks. Harold only made it about 20 feet before that bear caught up with him. That bear reared up and it grabbed old Harold hard around the shoulders and brought him in, pulling him close. Oh, poor old Harold thought he was about to meet his maker until he heard a voice whisper in his ear, Man, stop running or we're both gonna get fired. <laughs> it was my fifth season, Hank's fourth, and we were burned out. <laughs> We were service industry mercenaries, selling our souls to the highest bidder so we could fuel a serious travel habit in the off season. Here we are on the train. Clean cut young men here to ensure the enjoyment of our elders. This is us off the train. <laughs> Fucked up lunatics unfit to function in the workaday world. It was simple, work 80 hours a week, leave with 12 grand in the bank. We'd spend the great majority of it canvassing the world in an endless search for kicks. Europe, Asia, Africa, South America. If life is a hill, we roll down it head first. We never said woulda, shoulda, coulda, we just did. We ate exotic delicacies, had close encounters with the wildlife and survived horrid affairs with wild women. We had signed a month... <laughs> she was a doozy, that one. <laughs> we had signed a month-to-month -month lease with reality and could leave whenever we wanted. If we were half crazed by the end of the season, it was probably because we had to talk about Sarah fucking Palin so goddamn much. <laughs> By the end of my 2008 season, I stopped pretending that I could even tolerate her. The train went through Wasilla, the town she was so proud to have been mayor of. This wholesome family community is, in fact, the meth capital of Alaska. <laughs> I took great pleasure in crushing their miscon misconceptions about the hockey mom hero. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I am sorry to inform you that you cannot see Sarah Palin's house from the train. If you look closely, though, you can see Russia. <laughs> Folks, why couldn't the baby Jesus be born in Wasilla? Because they couldn't find three wise men or a virgin. <laughs> No, really, folks, how do you castrate a man from Wasilla? You kick his sister in the mouth! <laughs> Wasilla is so small, we'd roll through it before they could protest or ask questions. Now I want you all to wave bye-bye to Wasilla, folks. That's W-A-S-I-L-L-A. -L -L Put that backwards, that's all I saw. And that's all you saw, Wasilla, folks. <laughs> they worked us like dogs because they knew they had us. No matter how much we bitched, we came back year after year. The perks were too big to let go, no matter how bad the job got. We milked unemployment checks the whole off season, and since the train was owned by a cruise ship company, we'd get on any cruise with space available for 15 bucks a day with a 60% discount at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> We took cruises like most people take buses. It was cheap. <laughs> it was cheaper than paying rent. Of course, the last year, we'd almost lost our cruise benefits for wearing these little numbers on the pool deck of our Amazon River cruise. <laughs> that is the Duke. <laughs> It's a furry jock strap with a raccoon tail. And no, it's not gay. It's as manly as a musical, as sexy as a saxophone solo, and the ladies love them. <laughs> One hour to go and Mount Denali was out. We were on autopilot. <laughs> the mountain would easily distract them for the rest of the trip. Ladies and gentlemen, there she is, Mount Denali, the great one. 20,320 feet, the highest point in North America. We can only see the summit, folks. It's just the tip, but what a big, beautiful tip it is. <laughs> The train slowed so they could take photos. Hank and I made fresh cocktails for ourselves. The mountain meant tips, and we were one hour away from ultimate freedom. And folks, you'll notice some beaver lodges on the three o'clock side. You won't see them, of course. The busiest beavers only come out at night. Now, I can tell these lodges are inactive because they're completely grown over. An active beaver will keep her lodge nice and trim. There will usually be no growth or maybe just a little strip if she's feeling fancy. <laughs> then the worst happened. The mountain clouded over. Denali will disappear when she wants to. Groans of disappointment filled the air as they plopped their cameras back in their laps. I had to think fast or we'd lose them. Hank, cinnamon rolls. <laughs> he ran downstairs and threw six cinnamon rolls in the microwave. The sickly sweet smell wafted up the stairs and they forgot about the mountain entirely. All that mattered was warm, gooey. Icing, oh. 80, or 80 orders later, we were back on track. If their faces hadn't been so full of cinnamon rolls, they'd have eaten out of the palm of my hand. Hank closed the bar and made us another cocktail as we pulled into the depot. We stood at the bottom of the stairs for disembarkation, triumphant. In a week, we'd drive from Anchorage to San Francisco, then travel China for six weeks before hopping a cruise from Shanghai to Bangkok and spending the rest of the winter and fall bouncing around Southeast Asia and India. It was worth it. Every time, it was worth it. Our pockets bulged with 20s. The passengers smiled and thanked us for their special day. One old man in a huge cowboy hat gave me a vice grip handshake, the kind of cripplingly strong handshake only an old blue collar grandpa can give. Thanks, Eddie. We had a great time. I could feel the bill crumple in his hand as he squeezed tighter. Hey, son, you know you have a Cherokee name? 
Cherokee syrup? I, I had no idea. Yeah, son, Eddie means running eagle. Too full of shit to fly. <laughs> Eddie Jewell.